to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And I am back once again into Sunday afternoon, and I am tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And once again, it is very hot. Fall can't get here soon enough. I know the farmers need the heat, but it is hot outside. It is hot on the range, but that has not had uh, that has not made the the shooting classes slow down at all. Uh, very very busy. Lots going on. I'm busy. I've got classes of, of every day um, this this coming week, Monday through Friday, and I've got like four classes scheduled for Saturday and another one on Sunday, uh, which makes me very happy. I like to stay busy. I like to have classes. Um, absolutely fantastic and it keeps my wife off my case when she asked me what i did during the day i can actually show her what i did I tell her that i did something today and i'm not semi-retired this week <laughs> so it's been kind of a i mean it's been a pretty good summer i've been staying you know pretty busy but uh, there's been a couple weeks it's been real weird instead of being spread out all across the summer it's just kind of it's kind of just coming like spurts right a couple weeks i'll be really busy that type of thing which is um which is okay right i mean it makes up for it uh it leaves me lots of time to run and get honeydew projects done around the house which i guess if i'm going to be home i got to do honeydews got to keep the the wife uh kind of happy but uh Um, Pretty exciting news. I've got a a gal that is a lady, and you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, and I have actually been upping my game on Instagram quite a bit, I'm an old old dude, and I'm trying to figure out Instagram, and I'm trying to figure out hashtags on Instagram and, you know, all that stuff. But uh, I think I'm getting it. So um, you've seen a gal on there shooting, right? Um, And uh, she, you've seen a few, I posted a few of her videos of her shooting, and her name is Kat, and uh, she is actually going to be coming out and shooting with me like a couple times a week. I mean, she is serious. She's got some stuff in mind. She's got some goals in mind, and so we're gonna we're gonna get all over it, and we're gonna get her shooting and shooting quick and shooting accurately. And she's willing to put in the time and the effort, and I I look forward to it. Um, she's even got a hold of me, and we got her set up on some dry fire uh, type stuff. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, look forward uh, to all of that. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Lots of classes. Uh, excited for uh, repeat customers, and uh, we're just gonna you know, just keep right on moving. I I will talk about some of my other classes. I actually had um, a gal that signed up for kind of a mini women's course. She'll be here. Um, I think it's like six weeks, and uh, she is shooting a revolver. And it's very interesting. I don't see a lot of people actually shoot revolvers necessarily or come to my class. I see them shoot revolvers, yes. I don't see them take private classes like with revolvers. I've seen them come through my permit classes, but she is going to learn all about this revolver. And I'll be tell you right now, she is a darn good shot with that revolver. Uh, she picked up the trigger. You know, the trigger is very different from a semi-automatic. And she picked up that trigger right away. And I mean, she can, you tell, you, you know, I can tell her to give me, give me a hammer pair or a controlled pair or whatever. And I mean, she's, you know, she's stacking her shots, right? She's good at that trigger. She is really good at that trigger. She shoots a little Smith and Wesson 38 special. And, uh, she is, she is showing that she is very good with that gun. So I, uh, I, you know, she's had one class here. And we move her up to pairs and move her up to some distance, and she's doing absolutely fantastic. I look forward to having her back for more classes. We're going to get out. You know, she's really interested, and it's it's crazy because I've had them for about five years now. I've got a bunch of Sims rounds and Sims guns, and she's interested in in the Sims rounds and the Sims guns and, and, and going through some scenarios. So we're going to get into that. We're going to get out the shooting simulator for her. Uh, lots of fun stuff. And... Uh, I look forward to that as well. So going into fall, my fall looks really good, nice and busy, uh, lots of shooters. And I'm telling you right now, as the weather cools down, the kids are back in school now. 
uh, get out and shoot, man. Get out and shoot and uh, be prepared. Uh, I know summer gets kind of busy and some stuff gets kind of kicked to the side. But by all means, go out and make sure you put the time in and the effort in that shooting. It's a, it's a perishable skill. And ammo is... Well, self-defense ammo is, is pretty plentiful now. I know they're having a hard time with kind of the, some of the hunting rounds, the hunting calibers, uh, but self-defense rounds is very, uh, very accessible right now. It's 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 out there. Um, I will encourage you though, and I'm not, you know, I know I have no people that 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 work at gun stores and stuff, and I have seen the price of nine millimeter um, at the gun stores, and it is it is obscene. The amount of money they are charging you for 9mm rounds is obscene right now. I mean, I saw what used to be one of the cheaper rounds, uh, the Blazer um, aluminum case, right? That used to be a pretty cheap pretty cheap 50 rounds to buy. It is still the cheapest 50 rounds to buy. It's like $19 for 50 rounds of aluminum Blazer. So it's not necessarily super high quality. I mean, it'll shoot and go bang, but... You know, it's it's not the best of the best by any means, and it is still commanding quite a price. I encourage you to go online. Go online and price ammo and look around and look at it. And I know everyone touts, you know, you want to support small businesses. I know that's real big around here, and I get it. But I tell you what, I want to support small businesses, but I also want the small businesses to support me. And I am not paying 18 bucks or, you know, for, for good or even, well, I'm going to say for good, for off-brand stuff that I've never seen before, they're still asking like $24. I'm paying 40 cal price for 9mm ammo. Are you kidding me? I can get it. I can find it online for, uh, you know, $14, under about, you know, under $15, say between $14 and $15 for 50 rounds. I'm not giving you, and that's for remand ammo, right? But it's still good ammo. I am not giving you almost $19 for 50 rounds of aluminum blazer. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. So, I mean, you know, let me know. I would love, you know, this is it. I love interaction with the listeners. And so, you know, I'd love to know what you're paying for ammo. Where are you finding ammo out? Uh, is it somewhere local? And you don't have to live here. It could be it could be all the way across the country, right? Uh, uh, you know, maybe you're in Oklahoma. Maybe you're in Alabama. What are you getting your ammo for? How much are you getting your ammo for? I'd be curious to know if it was just here that's high priced or maybe it's low price compared to where you are i mean let me know hit me up on the facebook shoot me a message you can call me you could text me area code 620-794-6223 that's area code 620-794-6223 and uh you know as summer comes to an end because it is it is coming to an end when we're getting close to September here, right? This is Idaho. I'm looking for nights cooling off, you know, warm days, but, you know, cooler nights. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to this. It's been a long, hot summer where I'm at here in Idaho. I mean, it really has been a long, hot summer, and I am done with it. But I am nearing what I call my reloading season. When the weather gets cold and the snow starts to fly, I come into the war room and it's pretty much where I am every weekend if I don't have a class and I am reloading <clears throat> and uh, cleaning guns, which I didn't get to last year, but uh, I am reloading. So I've got reloading supplies. I've got powder and I've got primers, but I know for a long time, primers were really, really, really hard to come by. Um I was at a local gun store that sells primers. And I asked them, I said, how's your primer supply? And they're like, oh, man, we got tons of small pistol primers, right? Tons of them. Now, if you're not familiar, small pistol primers come in a little square box. There would be 100 primers in each package. They used to be about $4.99. An expensive one was a little over $5, maybe like $5.49. But we'll say $4.99 for 100 primers. It's fourteen ninety nine right now. Fourteen ninety nine. It's that's highway robbery. Fourteen ninety nine for a hundred primers. Are you kidding me? It's almost getting to the point where it is just, even though it's still high priced, it's cheaper to buy than reload. Honestly, I mean, I've got the brass. Uh, I've got lots of primers. I've got powder. I'm going to continue to reload what I have. 
right? And as long as I run out of primers first, I could buy some primers and probably be okay. But I can go online and I can buy nine millimeter ammo right now for like 25 cents around, which honestly is obscene for nine millimeter. Uh, you know, I remember when it was 14 cents, which I don't think we're ever going to be there again. But primers at 14.99 for uh, I can't say that enough. 14.99 for a hundred small pistol primers. Are you kidding me? Right, and it's absolute, absolutely amazing. I mean, the the price is still high. That high. It's it's oh my god. It's that's that's insane. I'm gonna I tell you what I'm gonna end up doing this winter is I'm gonna end up reloading everything I have using all my supplies up, and then I'm gonna have to clean my guns. Good lord, don't make me actually clean my guns. Don't make me do it. Don't make me clean my guns. I need cheap primers. So when you call me, when you text me, when you comment or message me on Facebook about your ammo. If you're a reloader, I want to know, what are you paying for primers? What are you paying for small pistol primers? Now, I have a bunch of small rifle primers that I'm going to fall back on to load my 9mm rounds with. Because it can be done, you just have to adjust some stuff. But it can be done. I am going to do that before I spend $15 for 100 primers. That's absolutely... It's absolutely ridiculous. It's just, I don't know. That's that's obscene. That's highway robbery. I tell you, they're out to get all my money, and they probably they probably will. So um, I'm gonna throw out there. I'm gonna throw something else out there. Something big is, I don't know if it's big for me. It's big, right? And I'm not gonna totally get into it. Like you know, you'll get the full, the full, uh, you know, all the details later on, right? Because I'm not quite ready to release him yet, but I am gonna talk about this just a smidge. So to, I'm looking at possibly getting another firearm. I am. I'm looking to get another firearm. I know I talk about it all the time, but I'm really serious this time. And no, it's not the SIG P365. It's just, or I don't think it is. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. So I helped this this lady that has uh, been coming, Kat, who's been coming and taking a bunch of classes from me, and who's actually pre-scheduled for like two classes a week for like the next couple months at the very least, right? She uh, went out and I actually went gun shopping with her. Now, occasionally I get to do this um, for my students if they ask me to. I, I enjoy doing it, but they ask me, they'll say, hey, Todd, why don't you come to the gun store with me? I want to buy a couple guns. And, you know, you know, I can do it myself, but it's just nice to have someone else there that can explain stuff and, you know, it just makes them more comfortable. So by all means, I don't mind a gun. Sh- I don't mind gun shopping, even if it's not buying myself firearms. I don't mind gun shopping. I don't mind spending other people's money or helping them spend their money. And she showed up and she got herself a SIG P365 along with a Canic, a Canic rival. And she did not get the dark side one. She got the gray and the gold with the gold trim, that like the 80s Cadillac gold trim, which is the gray looks great. The gold, yeah. It's not, it's not horrible, but it's different. Anyhow, she picked up that. So she left there with two firearms, right? Two firearms. And I'm looking, and I'm looking at that gun. And I've done some research on it. Now it's a, excuse me, I had something something going on there for a minute I had to fix. If you have looked at that gun out of the Canics, what is it? It's the long-barreled Canic. It's the long-barreled Canic. It's got a magwell on it. Um, you know, a Magwell like like flare deal on it. it. What? Why? Why is that a gun you're gonna carry? I don't know. She bought the Sig P365 and then the Canic. So what's going on there? Why would someone buy that big old Canic? I don't know. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm really looking at that Canic. I'm looking at that Canic hard. I'm counting my pennies. I'm I'm tearing apart the couch cushions. I'm looking for the quarters. I'm I'm going through pockets in the laundry. I'm the guy that's taking the change out of the washing machine and the dryer. I'm looking at this canic and I'm looking at it pretty darn hard. 
and she's going to come over and she's going to take another two classes next week. And I am going to get a chance. She promised me that I would, I'm going to get a chance to run that can. I can get some time behind it. And I'm pretty interested in, in, in that gun. Now, why would I be interested in a competition size firearm? Why would I be interested in that? I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's yet to be seen. And I have been adding some stuff on another note. I have been adding some stuff to my range lately. And I've been posting pictures of I'm actually building some stuff out of wood. And that's not something that I normally do. Um, I'm not that great, but I found a, a great diagram online. And so I'm getting that, taking care of that. I got good instructions, so I feel confident I can build it. And as I build these things, it is uniquely in the shape of Idaho, right? What is in the shape of Idaho, right? Well, that would be a barricade. That would be a VTAC barricade. And I actually have built two of them. Why would I need to build those? Why would I want to build those? I don't do rifle stuff. I don't. I don't do anything rifle. And it's very interesting because I thought I thought there was going to be a lot of people would like know what those are. And I posted pictures of them and people are like, well, that's a funny shaped Idaho or that's a weird cornhole board. Or, and I know some of them were just joking, you know, but I don't, honestly, no one actually stated what those were. So whether if they knew what they were or not, I mean, I, I've got, got no idea, but I've got two of them. I just finished up one today. Uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Now we're going to take a little break here for just a second it is like 100 degrees in this room, and if I turn on the fan, you won't be able to hear me talk. So I'm going to take I'm gonna take a little drink of my beverage. So you'll have to wait. Just give me a second. Oh, there you go. I'm back. That was good. That was refreshing. It saved my voice. It is like 102 degrees in here or something. It's freaking warm in here. Speaking of it being warm in here, I'm pretty excited about this as well. I finally got an air conditioner in the classroom. Finally, I got an air conditioner installed in the classroom. Now that summer is almost over, but I'll be well prepared for next year. Um, it's a little uh, like ductless unit. It's freaking amazing. Um, but it's not. I'm not using it yet. Why is that? Because I need the electrical hooked up. And I put out the call. I wanted to make a trade and get some electrical work done. And I got a hold of one of the listeners, one of my uh, former students, by the name of Burke. If he listens to this, thank you, Burke. And he will be out Friday to do a little, a uh, little tradey trade, and get my AC all wired in. And I'm looking forward to it. I had a permit class on Saturday. And August is always kind of a slow time for permit classes because around here we have our county fair. Maybe the county fair isn't big where you're at, but it's it's really big here. And uh, lots of 4-H, a lot of rodeo, 4-H and FFA. And, you know, and we're in the middle of harvest right now. People are busy. I had about six people in my permit class, which was fine. That That's good. That, I'm, I'm okay with that. It was a really fun class. Uh, great people. We got to shoot some still. But I tell you what, that classroom, it gets a little warm. We're only in that classroom from like eight o'clock in the morning. So the very start of class till about noon, right? And then we go to lunch and we were outside shooting the rest of the day. Uh, I had some fans going in there. She was a mite warm. And so I'm looking at this AC going, my gosh, I need to get this thing wired in. Wired in. It gets a little, it gets a little warm. Gets a little, gets a little musty in there. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting that all fixed up. Um, that'll be kind of nice. Um, pretty excited, pretty excited actually. Um, and what I think I'm going to do since, I mean, I didn't even do a podcast last weekend because I'll be honest with you, it's like a thousand degrees in here. It was freaking horrible and I didn't feel like sitting in here. So what I'm going to do is I think once I get that AC going, I'm going to cut a, we share a wall, the two rooms share a wall and I'm going to cut a hole in the wall and put a big vent in there and hopefully it'll cool off this room as well. Um, fingers crossed that works. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'll just be in here sweating it out for you guys. I promise. Just be sweating it out for you guys. Um, a couple things I did want to talk about uh, today. And one of them is this cool story out of North Carolina. And I've actually got an audio clip. So I'll go ahead and play it. And then uh, we will uh, we will discuss it. 
A school district in North Carolina says they plan to arm schools with AR-15s this school year. Madison County administrators say each of their district's six schools will have semi-automatic assault-style rifles inside their buildings. Those guns will be located in an emergency safe accessible to the school resource officer. The safes will also contain additional ammunition along with tools to break into barricaded classrooms. God forbid that anyone ever come to our schools to cause harm. But if they do come to my school, I want my, my resource officers to have the ability to meet violence with violence. My school resource officers will not have to wait, retreat, or have to leave the situation to get the weaponry needed to deal with that threat. The Madison County Sheriff's Office says all the rifles and accessories were bought using money donated by residents of Madison County. Every school resource officer will attend hours of extra tactical training with these rifles. Go figure. They want to meet violence with violence. Good on you, Sheriff in North Carolina. I did not catch your name, but good on you. I mean, we don't need another Uvalde where there's like two or 300 officers there and like nobody does anything for... 45 freaking minutes right i like this this is being proactive the the, the 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 rifles will be there the officers will not have to run if something were to happen the officer will not have to run back out to their vehicle to get their rifle and come back in the rifles will be there the officer will they will be in a safe the officer will have access to it and i read another article that talked about how there'll be of course extra mags um uh, ammo loaded mags all that stuff in the safe along with door breaching equipment no excuses no excuses is you're going to have the tools needed to do the job and they also said in the schools there would be like a panic uh, a panic button of sorts right that would ring to a center and let them know something you know that there was a shooting that there was a shooter that something was going on so no one would actually have to make a physical call they're just going to hit a button fantastic and if you look at this he said they're they're using you know all their resources to do this, and it's in a uh, you know that's that's what needs to be done. And it said with uh, with the weapons, these were this was money that was collected that was collected from the public. The public got together and everyone donated, and this is what they're going to do. This is what needs done. Let's be proactive. Let's not let's not uh, uh, let a school shooting happen. Right that's that's how we stop school shootings that's with you stop violence with violence i hate to say it but it's the truth you stop violence with violence to a certain extent you do when it comes to concealed carry when it comes to a mass shooter it's a, a guy with a good guy with a gun whether it be law enforcement or a armed citizen stops violence with violence that's that's how you handle it that's how you handle it so they're preparing for violence. If they have to have it, they're going to be prepared. It is there. They can uh, use it when they when they deem uh, appropriate, when they deem necessary. And I think that's a that's a good thing. They're setting their schools up for success, not failure. And I think all the schools need to look at everything that's going on, and they need to 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 look at their options and possibly possibly uh, do do the same thing. So a little while ago, and I'm all over the board today, and it is what it is. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, make a podcast in 104 degree temperatures in here. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Cajun Cowboy is not here, and he is missing out because it is warm in here. And I know he loves it when the war room is hot. No, he does not. I don't either. So let's get this. Let's get this on on the road here. I'm like 23 minutes in, so this might be like a 40 minute podcast. Just heads up, it's hot. It's not like it used to be. I can't get four people here. I can't get four people here to do the podcast with me anymore. Not all at the same time. Not during summer anyway. Uh, but let's, let's talk about that revolver show. I talked about the, the gal that was taking classes with a revolver. And the revolver worked fantastic for her. I do a radio show every Friday. I've mentioned it before. And the topic came up. Revolver versus semi-auto you know what's the most simple gun what's the this what's the that if they had a a 60 year old woman 70 year old woman in class student in class and they said woman and i don't know why i didn't say that they did you know uh what's the simple what's the best gun for them to use and sure enough my co-host said 
A revolver. I'll give them a revolver. It's a simple. They just point. They shoot. They press the trigger. If it doesn't go bang, they press the trigger again, and 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 they're gonna. It's gonna go bang eventually. Well, you know what? I look at that, and that's a bunch of bull crap. It really is. It's a bunch of bull crap. Our revolve. Do they do they function simple? Yes, they do. Pull the point. Pull the trigger. It shoots. But guess what? This is coming from a guy that sells firearms. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. He does teach a few classes, but he does not get the amount of people through my classes that I do. You know, and I, I actually crunched some numbers. I was sitting in the permit class yesterday. The law enforcement officer was there teaching his part of the class. And I, I you know, I do a class a month and I've been doing this for a long time. And I don't know. Let, let me see if I can find what I am looking for here. I uh, had some numbers. Uh, where is it? And I was texting my wife. So I'm currently looking through texts to my wife. You guys don't need to know about that. You don't need to know about that. Let me look. Let me see. Where is it? Yes, you're going to hear me talking pointlessly in the mic. Oh, here we go. I have given... It's an eight-hour class, mind you. So I have, and and this is this is just kind of a, a the probably the lower number. I've probably actually done more than this because there's been occasions every year where I've given you know two, maybe three permit classes a month. But on the, we'll say I give one, I give at least one a month, and I've been doing this for nine years now. I have given, I have taught a hundred and eight permit classes, a hundred and eight permit classes. So that's eight hundred and sixty-four hours worth of instruction and i well shoot i could do the number i anyhow i won't do the math i graduated from a small a smallish school here in the valley and i tell everyone it affected my my comprehension of math but if you're not local you're not going to laugh so um but i have i've had let's see an average of anywhere from we'll say an average of 20 students a class Okay, for like 108 classes. That's just the permit classes. That's not that's not like uh, private classes or anything like that, right? That's just permit classes. So I've had way more students than he's ever had. And so here he is saying that for a woman, uh, the simplest gun is a revolver. That's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, if they want to use a revolver, fantastic. But here, here's what happens. Uh, you give someone a revolver, who's a little older, there's a good chance, not all the time, but there's a good chance, right? Especially a female, a woman, I'm not picking on women, but as they get older, what, you lose a little strength, arthritis sets in, there's a good chance they cannot press a trigger. They cannot pull that revolver trigger. And if they do, they're torquing that gun up because they're torquing it up, they're pushing against the grip with the with the back of the palm of their hand as they're squeezing that trigger and they angle that gun up and that's the only way they can get enough leverage to press that trigger. Most of them, not all of them, most of them. And so honestly, they have trouble with revolver. A little snub nose revolver is snappy and can be miserable to shoot depending on the strength of the shooter. And most most older women have a hard time with that. They they do. It's just I'm not picking on women. It, it is what it is. And so you know a semi-auto is a better choice. And he pretty much said simple guns to shoot for women are revolvers. False, false. He tells me this is what he tells me. He goes if they're going to struggle with the trigger on a revolver, they probably can't rack the slide on a semi-auto. Oh no no no. I can teach someone to rack a difficult slide on a semi-automatic. I don't care who you are. I can teach you how to rack that slide. I can't cure arthritis. I can't give you strength in your arm to, to press that trigger, right? And this is also what he says. You know, you're shooting that gun. It may, it may jam up. It may have problems. And then that gun's not so simple. So what are you saying? The average person, the average woman cannot because that's that was the subject of our conversation the average woman cannot figure out how to run a semi-auto it's too confusing for them it's too hard for them because that is that is completely false okay this is coming from a guy that i've had in my permit classes alone you know two three thousand students right he hasn't this guy hasn't taught that many i've seen it more than he has way more than he has 
And I'm going to tell you ladies out there, if you got, if you're, I'm kind of on a rant today and I'm kind of fired up and I apologize. Oh, I don't apologize. It makes for good podcast. From what I'm told, Mo tells me it makes for a good podcast. But if you, ladies, if you can't use a revolver, that's fine. You don't have to use a semi-auto. I've taught, you know, hundreds of women how to use semi-autos just fine. I've taught them how to use them just fine. And there's a there's a way to do it. And you can train to do it. And you can do it correctly. And you can be so happy. Sometimes when I do a radio show, this guy likes to get on there and just completely go against everything I say. I don't know if controversy makes for good radio or not, but it irritates the hell out of me. But I'm, t- I'm telling you the facts, the facts, the way I see them, right? I'm not just pushing what I've got on my gun counter. I'm not just selling what I got in my gun counter at the moment right that's not my favorite gun guess what i don't sell firearms i don't get a kickback on firearms someone comes to me who i don't care if you're 18 i don't care if you're 78 i don't care if you're 89 i don't care if you're 32 i'm gonna let you kind of choose a firearm you're gonna shoot some of the guns that i have we're gonna find what works for you i'm not gonna look at you and categorize you and say oh my gosh you're you're an older female you're an older woman so uh you need to automatically shoot this if you can if you're 80 years old and you like revolvers and you can pick up a revolver and shoot it then good god by all means shoot the freaking revolver if you can't we can find a gun that'll work for you right that's the way we're gonna do it i'm not against revolvers i'm not against semi-autos picking a gun is is a personal choice what works for me doesn't may not work for you and you have to understand that and you have to know that going into it um that's just just the way that's just the way it is so uh, i'm gonna jump off that soapbox and i'm gonna jump on to another one here pretty quick so i talked about my VTech barricades i've got those up you've seen some pictures of those uh, I'm going to start using those, and you'll see how, when, and why, and where. And I also picked up, I also picked up some sandbags. Well, I didn't pick them up. Uh, I was also had a person who's doing this with me buy some sandbags, and I'm in the process of filling them up. Um, I've got some uh, a good set of dumbbells coming. Uh, all kinds of stuff on the horizon. So I guess the topic of the day might be fitness and shooting. And, you know, people get into shooting for different reasons. They just like to go out and shoot, right? And that's fine. And we're all different levels of of, of age category. We, we spoke about that with the, with the revolver, right? If you're a young guy and you're getting into shooting and maybe you're going to get into to comp, competitive shooting and maybe you're just, you really want to, like, learn how to shoot and learn how to shoot under pressure and and stuff uh because you want to protect yourself and your family your kids your loved ones whoever that i'm going to tell you right now fitness and shooting go hand in hand they go hand in hand fitness and shooting do um you know you need to be able to you need to know the fundamentals that that all fundamentals will get you a long ways but guess what under stress your blood is pumping your adrenaline is up the blood is racing through your veins you are trying to survive you are under stress guess what's going to happen your heart rate is going to go through the roof and you might be able to stand there at a table and you might be able to like shoot at a bullseye target no problem and hit the bullseye target and stack shots not a problem but you elevate your stress you elevate your adrenaline you elevate your heart rate and let's see what happens that simulates being uh, you know in a defensive situation you don't know how you're going to react and one of the ways to be able to do that is by fitness and shooting is a very physical thing right i talked uh to was talking to a um she's a nutritionist and she's uh like like um like a crossfit coach right fitness coach and i was talking with her and i mean this 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 person is a she's she's an an olympic weightlifter right very fit right and she actually has a a business where she trains people and and you know trains them helps them with their nutrition and their all kinds of stuff she trains lots of athletes and she has some professional shooters that she trains right she she writes workouts for them and they tell her and it's the truth to think about it their big thing is if they're in physical top physical condition or as good as they can get they're eating correctly they can run they can move they can jump they can do all that stuff like they're supposed to do right and their their core supports it and their body supports it and they don't get fatigued 
their shooting improves tenfold. And if you're if you're into it, right? If you're into it and you want to know how to do that and you're truly dedicated, you're going to look at the physicality of it and you're going to learn that the better physical shape I'm in, the better my shooting's going to be. Now, I'm not saying that if you're not going to be, you know, in, in top peak physical condition, you can't shoot. You can still shoot. A lot of people can shoot, right? And that's fine. And maybe that's the, just kind of the level that you want to be at, right? But hey, if you want to really get into it, if you want to compete or you want to, and I, it, it pains me to say this because I'm not the tactical guy, right? But if you want to be able to fight someone off and then be able to, 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 to you know, shoot and defend yourself, then that's what you're going to have to do. You have to be in top, uh, I don't want to say top physical shape, but you got to be, you know, be used to like physical work right you have to be able to get you know get your your cardio needs to be in place you need to be able to lower your heart rate when you you need to be able to control your breathing when you take that shot and that takes practice and that takes work and that's something that you may or may not want to uh want to look into and, and think about right you'd be the complete package a fit a fitness and uh, and uh shooting they go hand in hand it is the full package it is the full package and if it is available to you and you want to get into that i encourage it wholeheartedly now that doesn't mean you can't just buy a gun really learn how to shoot it and, and still be productive when you go out to defend yourself because you you by all means you certainly can right you certainly can but if you're willing to look hard at it go out figure it out uh and you want the whole package you want to be well-rounded then by all means be well-rounded i i encourage it wholeheartedly okay jumping off that soapbox on to another one so let's talk about let's talk about this like these i don't even know what they like we'll we'll talk about like the uscca right i and and different companies i think there's one called right to bear there's one like citizens legal defense network there's all kinds and what are they these are insurances that you can get their carry insurance is what they are right they give you a card they're going to cover you they're going to help you with attorneys if you ever have to use your gun and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's not for everyone but it's not a bad thing and they all have something to offer that's good but they are insurance com- and you know insurance companies and so what so you need to make sure you read the fine print you need to know what they what they offer and and what you're getting out of it and what it costs but here's the thing here's the thing i was approached and i i have a hard time doing this right i mean i don't know i i could still take sponsors for the podcast right if someone wants a commercial like crossbreed or some ammo company or ammo company would be great because maybe they'd give me some ammo but if they wanted airtime they wanted to throw commercials at me that i could play on my podcast i would definitely take that i'm not going to say no but here's what i have a problem with right this is difficult for me um i don't want to be controlled by someone else i don't want to, what i say be controlled and unfortunately i think um over the course of my nine years doing this right i've let people kind of control what i say a little bit and i'm not saying it sponsors or anything like that because lord knows i don't have any uh, but even other you know competition i've kind of bowed down to them a little bit and let them when they say something when they call me out on something i i i I just let them control me, right? I let them kind of control what I put on my social media. No more. That's going to end. No more. If you bother me on social media, well, back up. I'm getting a little excited. Let's go back to the concealed carry insurance. So for a while, I had a thing going with USCCA, and I guess I still do. They would come to my permit classes, and they would um, try to promote their concealed carry insurance. And I would... You know, I, I would get a little bit of a kickback if that happened. I'll be honest with you. If they if they got one of my students to sign up, I would get a little kickback. I give them a platform, all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't know, and that was going okay. I didn't always get people to sign up, right? But I mean, they came and they would talk about it and they would present it, not me. And they couldn't get a lot of people to sign up. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't not on me i gave them a platform i gave them access to my students and if you got their insurance there's nothing wrong with the insurance Uh, hopefully you never have to use it but it's there in case you do so i'm not bad talking their insurance but all of a sudden what all of a sudden my representative that i dealt with that i dealt with that did all the presentation he just fell off the planet he disappeared 
I hadn't seen him for a year. He shoots me a text message all of a sudden after a year of being where, I don't know, AWOL. And, uh, hey, Todd, how's it going? Uh, is there anything I could help you with? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. All right? I tell you what, if you're going to disappear for a year, I'm, I'm freaking done with you. I, I am done with you. Now, I will say if you signed up for UC, USCCA right now and you put down me, I think I would get a little bit of a kickback. And But honestly, I don't even care about that anymore. Very interesting, though, because I am done with it. He reached out to me. I kind of ignored. Actually, I didn't ignore him. I said, I'm fine. Then I got an email from another guy that was a district manager from them reaching out to me, wanting to come to my class, wanting to to you know restart what they didn't finish. And I ignored him. They wanted to have a meeting with me about it. I ignored him because I'm done. I'm done. I'm not. If you're not going to perform, I'm not going to have you involved with me or my class or my business or anything. Okay, I'm just not going to do it. Um, then I got actually got a, another email over this weekend from another. I won't say who, but from another concealed carry insurance place, wanting me to meet with them, wanting to do the same thing that the USCCA was doing. And this is what riles me up the most, right? I'm not, you know, you can't, I'm not going to whore myself out or whore my students out for money. I'm, I, I'm just not, I'm not going to do it. You know, I went around, I liked the USCCA, right? But they bailed on me. They bailed on me. It's still good insurance. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a good deal, but I'm not going to have them in my class anymore. They bailed on me. But because I like the USCCA and, and I already pushed that insurance, I'm not all of a sudden just going to shift gears and say the USCCA sucks and then use this other place all of a sudden because they reached out to me. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not even going to respond. I'm not necessarily for sale unless you're Spotify and you like my podcast and you want to offer me millions and millions of dollars. I could be right up there with Joe Rogan. I could. I, I'm pretty sure I got the fan base. My fan base is the best. I could do a Spotify show. I really, actually, yeah, they're not going to call me. <laughs> but as can still carry insurance. I'm done with them. I'm not. I'm not going to deal with any of them. I don't care. Can I make money doing it? I certainly can. But I'm done. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to say all of a sudden that one is crappy and all of a sudden say the next one is the best because then I look like a liar to my students that have bought the USCCA and I don't think USCCA is bad. I just. I don't like it. I don't don't like it when they dealt with me i just that's it it's the personnel i guess and that's that's where i'm gonna leave that um so there we go i got me i got me all fired up all fired up um <clears throat> but that's a good show that's i need it i need another sip of my beverage a little sip of my kombucha here oh that's worse when it gets warm it really is but um that is going to be it for the show and you know it's all ranty and all kinds of stuff um and i apologize for i don't apologize for that it makes for a good podcast but if you support the podcast i certainly appreciate it if you want to support the podcast you can uh and you like it you can go ahead and share it on social media that's the best thing that you can do is share the podcast on social media with your family friends get more people to sign up listen like share follow me on uh, Facebook, Patriot Defense. I have recently heard that uh, that uh, Facebook is for old people now. And maybe it is. If it is, and you fall into the age group of people that does Instagram, follow me on Instagram as well. I'm trying to do better on Instagram. And I do have the TikTok, and I am had a lot of people request some videos on TikTok, which I need to get into, but uh, which I will sooner or later. But if you got any comments, you got any questions, you can call me. You can text me. Area code 620-794-6223. It's area code 620-794-6223. You can call me. You can text me. You can find me on all the social medias and message me there. I do respond. I look forward to it, and I do appreciate everyone that has stuck with me. I know I haven't been super regular on these podcasts. I'll go about two weeks, then I'll miss a week, and then I'll go another two or three weeks, and I'll miss another week. And uh, that's going to get better uh, really soon. I'm kind of revamping some stuff. I get caught up in things, and I don't always do what I need to do. Um, but I'm trying to get better, and I'll try to get some more uh, people on the podcast with me so you guys just don't have to hear me uh, breathe heavy and rant into the microphone. Until then, everyone, have a great week. I will, uh, I will see you in a few days. Actually, I'll see you next time. 
five days, seven days, six. I'll see you next weekend. That's what I'll do. Bye.